Good Sunday to you all. This is not a normal live, but after the week that we had, people continue to show their whole entire ass on social media, especially on Twitter. So I am going to address the um, abolitionists, a.k.a. the black leftists, and the cosplaying socialists, a.k.a. the white male socialists and some of their white women ilk. So if you're not going to like the words on here, then I don't know what to tell you. Happy Sunday to you. So <laughs> let me just get to this goddamn Twitter because I have my iPad open. So what happened with, um, with all the shootings that happened, including the two shootings with Dante Wright, the 20-year-old from Minneapolis, Minnesota, well, Brooklyn Center, which is the suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and to Adam Toledo in Chicago. Some of the abolitionists, which is the black leftists, continue just to put this rhetoric out. It's one thing you want to cut some police funding, which they should not have a big budget because in here in New York, they have like a $6 million budget. And they use it for bullshit. But um, it's another thing you want to get rid of the police and dismantle the police. That's not a wise choice. Because that opens up to smaller white militias. Just to beat down black and brown people. For no fucking reason. It'll be a lawless country. But since the abolitionists... Want to play dumb? I am going to read some tweets from some folks. So I am going to start with um, Brie Newsom. She is a progressive commentator, I guess that's what her title is. She said some out of this world stuff that just rub people like me the wrong way which gives also progressives a pretty much a bad freaking name so i'll just read some of the tweets that i screenshot here we go the george floyd and policing act she forgot to put justice is problematic imo because it doesn't address structural racism which is the central problem in policing enormous time money and effort will be spent on the passage of a bill that doesn't that excuse me that does little yet is promoted by progressives as an adequate response okay but the same progressives are the ones that um voted for the bill and yes she did change her name to defund and abolish but it's still at Brie Newsom, still there. And then she goes on more with other things. Saying, this, I caught the last part, as, as many abolitionist organizers point out who are more expert at this than me, she's calling her fellow um, progressive activists abolitionists. Like they Harriet Tubman and shit. I voice support as a housing organizer because this issue overlap at a lot of the solutions to to this have to take place at the local and state level. But Fed government must name proper approach, defund and abolish. So I'm going to read that again clearly. As many abolitionist organizers point out who are more expert at this than me. I voice support as a housing organizer because these issues overlap. A lot of the solutions to this have to take place at the local and state level. But Fed government must name, must name proper approach. Defund and abolish. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean, but I'm going to just say this. There 
are some state and local governments that actually began to strip funding from police and put in reforms already. Like Maryland, the state of Maryland. Minnesota is trying to do some stuff here and there, even though they ran into this problem. The state of New York is doing some stuff and the city of New York is also doing some stuff. So, and I believe Denver. So, uh, I'm confused and perplexed, more so perplexed. The feds must defund and abolish. That makes no sense. But okay. But I say this. Those abolitionists, some of them actually want to um, reform law enforcement. Um, so that's one. Two, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act actually um, eliminates qualified immunity for cops. Actually puts ban on chokeholds. Um, have reforms in place, trainings for cops how to deal with black and brown people, eliminate racial profiling, such as stop and frisk. So I I don't understand that tweet. But I think she haven't read the, just, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act because she forgot to put that in there. So I'm gonna need for Ms. Newsom to read before tweeting some dumbass shit of a thread that she did and have people white people actually agreeing with that bullshit because that shit makes no motherfucking sense so that's my advice to her there's another quote-unquote abolitionist on this bird app that seemed to be stupid too all these motherfuckers are stupid if you really want to get technical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Is this guy who calls himself a socialist? Professor Wright? tweeted this because um, the Chicago mayor, Lori Lightfoot, was trending because somebody put out a um, a tweet saying she was going to resign. I guess problems with her wife or something with Adam Toledo. So, I mean, I don't know what that fucking shit is about. But here we go. Lori Lightfoot is a perfect example of how Democrats use identity politics to elect weak, fake, uncaring divisive people into power just to push their centrist pretend progressive agenda that will never bring about real change we saw it with president obama when well, he put obama kamala vice president harris warnock cinema etc what does warnock have to do with this i have no idea justice dems slash DSA, which is Democrat Socialists of America, are doing a superb job at getting people elected, but none they help will call out the power structure in the name of the solidarity with the same centrists who don't care for systematic change. How are we going to get change without challenging the system? Okay. So Savion, that's his name. I'm going to call him Savion. It's stupid, too. Because the DSA and the Justice Dems are not doing a good job. They primary um, experienced Democrats who actually done for their constituents. They may have not been around and campaigned the right way, but 
they have record and proof of doing the work for the will of the people. Them same ones that were um, endorsed and got elected through the Justice Dems and the freaking DSA, they don't do shit. Look at Ale Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. What legislation that she has passed? Because I'm about to get into her ass in a minute. What legislation did uh, Tlaib pass? Omar. And I'm saying, quote unquote, centrist. See, I don't like labels and I don't like ideology. Those same centrists and most of those black ones he name checked except for one who is white, flip states and districts. And while not actually does for the people, he actually is proposing bills and also co-sponsoring bills that is becoming law. Unlike your um, progressive faves who don't do shit but run their motherfucking mouth on Twitter. New ones that got elected and they, all they do is running their motherfucking mouth on Twitter and not working with the people in Congress to pass bills. They are, they, they're proposing these pie in the motherfucking sky bills that is not going to even get 10 votes on the motherfucking House floor. So, Savion, what kind of motherfucking job is the DSA and the Justice Dem is doing? Because the only thing they're doing is trying to overthrow the government and it's not working in their motherfucking favor. Until Savion, Professor Wright, let me know what the fucking good job they're doing. I suggest that he do some research and shut the whole entire fuck up. Because the former president actually got health care and made health care the law of the land. The vice president is actually doing good work and has done good work in the Senate and before then. Warnock just recently got in there and is accomplishing way more than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has been in Congress for the last two years. He's only been in the Senate for three months and does wait more than most of these progressive people that have been in here for two years. And even as much cinema get on my motherfucking nerves, she's more affected than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Really? We gonna try that motherfucking bullshit? We doing that shit? I want Savion Professor Wright to shut the fuck up. So, that's another abolitionist that I got off. And is this guy, where is he? I replied to his tweet. So, I'm going to look for that shit. Because I was bothered. That shit had me bothered. Because he said something about somebody being, they don't need to F with her and all this shit. So I'm just trying to find that shit. Where the fuck that shit is. Here we go. Right here. This guy, I don't know what he does. He's a senior editor for the Daily Beast. His name is Marlo Stern. And he lives in my city. Of course, these assholes live in my city. He said this. Democratic Party better not fuck up AOC because she is the best messenger they ever had and are historically terrible at messaging. Okay, Democrats are not the best at messaging. But when it comes to legislating and governing, we're the motherfucking shit, bitch. And it proves it. And it proves that we are. You look at Kennedy. Johnson. Carter. Clinton. Obama. And Biden. And soon to be Harris. 
We the motherfucking shit when it comes to motherfucking governing. So these same quote unquote bro socialists, the white men who define themselves as socialists. Yeah, those motherfuckers. Y'all the same little motherfuckers who have Republican parents. Let's say that again. These same bro socialists who define themselves as democratic socialists, criticizing the Democratic Party, the black centrists, if you really want to get technical, are the same motherfuckers that had parents who define themselves as independent moderates or Republicans. Their parents voted for Reagan, bitch. While my parents voted for the Democratic Party, party lifelong i mean i'm telling the truth i'm not lying where's the lie so we better not fuck with aoc who the fuck is alexandra ocasio cortez besides she's an elected official who the fuck is she she's not a leader of a caucus she sits on a committee, but she has no high committee role. She's an influence to the younger, much younger generation. Not people in my generation. They like her, but they don't idolize her. I don't know what Marlo, what kind of shit that, that Marlo is smoking. But Marlo needs to shut the fuck up, too. I mean, he looks like a whole entire gentrifier if you really want to go to his page. He looks like he's the motherfucker that just came in from the middle of the country or somewhere up north or somewhere out west, wherever the fuck he came from, came into a city that's been gentrified and loved all his bro socialists and the gentrifiers that came from West Bubblefuck. To live in communities like mine and don't stay there for a long time and don't talk to the people in the community. That's what Eric Adams was talking about. But to Marlo, nobody's hating on Alexandria Ocasio, well, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. So I'm gonna need for you, Marlo, to shut the fuck up and continue writing for the Daily Beast, whatever you write for. Hmm. I'm slaying these 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 abolitionists and these socialist folks. Jamal Green. Everybody know who Jamal Green is. He's the guy that used to work for Bernie Sanders and complain about Bernie Sanders, but now he's sucking Bernie Sanders, I guess, Bernie Sanders dick. Jamal Green said this. He's the one that started the whole Lori Lightfoot is about to resign. So there's a new update. The cheating occurred in Elmhurst at the hotel paid for by the city. The chick left. The chick's boyfriend got caught with a pistol. Chick calls Lori, you better take care of this or I'm going to the news. Phone calls were made. Lori's wife finds out, beats her ass. Their daughter runs out. Front to the police and says, my moms are fighting. I don't know where that shit came from. And it looks like a whole made up ass story. And then he goes, Jamal. Lori Lightfoot is resigning tomorrow in a stunning end to her mayorship. Wow. Coming from motherfucking Jamal Green. Messy ass little bitch. Because he's messy. Seems as if. He said more shit than ever. Because there's always receipts of what he said. And how he said it. So I'm going to find that tweet. Because it's somewhere here.
So he said this back on May 3rd, 2020, almost a year ago. Biden insider said today that Stacey Abrams is basically a joke and Kamala is a clunky communicator. As much I want to defend these black women right now, I can't help it to think about the shucking and driving they doing to impress a man who no shouldn't be president. Okay. So, Mr. Green, around that time, three weeks prior, your guy, the one that you called racist, but still defending, the 79-year-old socialist, dropped out April 8th, 2020. So that's one. Two, that same 79-year-old socialist that you called racist, now sucking his dick, endorsed then-candidate Joseph Robinette Biden. Three, Stacey Abrams was not in consideration to be the vice president. She was endorsing Joe Biden. And I don't even know she officially endorsed him. So that's three. And four. Joe Biden didn't call Kamala Harris a clunky communicator. His insiders, his folks. Didn't like the fact that she came for his record. With the busing thing. It's called, let's see. Um... In the midst of a campaign, a debate. I mean, after all, your guy went after Pete Buttigieg because he saw him as a threat. And Elizabeth Warren. And Joe Biden. You ain't say shit then. Tell me you want to defend these black women? Motherfucker, we don't even want your defense. You look like a whole fucking chickmunk. A chickmunk and a beaver mixed together. I don't even know how that shit mixed together. Nigga, you ugly. You a whole entire, um, let's see, boot licker. You boot licking for someone that you called racist, but then kissing their ass throughout the primaries. Motherfucker, which one is it? And then you talking about Lori Lightfoot? Like, do you got a problem with black women? You not getting no ass? What, what, what is it? Black women don't want to give you the ass? They don't want to give you the pussy? Like, which one is it, Jamal? Which one is it? Because you always got something to say about Kamala out your motherfucking mouth. She's the vice president of the United States. Period. You mad your guy lost twice? He did it to himself. He did it to himself the first time. And he did it to himself the second time and lost more support. I guess the progressive wing is not united after all because if they were, he or Elizabeth Warren, one of them would have dropped out from before and they didn't. They didn't coalesce around each other like the quote unquote moderates coalesce around each other. I don't know if you recanted his statement around her, but what I do know is he's a whole entire fucking liar. He's not to be trusted. So black women out there, if out there, if you are a liberal, leftist, moderate, whatever you are, do not trust Jamal Green. He is not an ally to black women. He's disrespectful. He's a whole entire liar and he's a bitch ass. That's what he is. So, I got that abolitionist. Now, I kind of respect this person, but this person's been pissing me off for the last couple of days. So, I'm just going to read their tweet. Dr. Johnson, this cop sends dozens of people to jail by planting drugs and guns, including a fireman. Tell me again how this can be reformed.
<sighs> Dr. Johnson. There's a George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. You're a smart guy. You know this. Why why you want to abolish the 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 law enforcement? I get everyone is upset. I'm upset and everybody's upset, but abolishing the police is not the answer. We had to scream off the top of the root heads to the roof heads. I said the root heads. The roof heads of um getting that George Floyd Justice and Policing Act on the Senate floor to be voted on. Abolishing the police, you sound like these leftists that you criticize on Twitter. Because he does drag them on Twitter. But this abolishing the police sounds pretty fucking dumb. It's a fucking stupid ass movement. It's a stupid motherfucking slogan. And it's more so white leftists saying this bullshit. But you motherfuckers live in the suburbs. Try living in the hood for like a day or two. 48 hours. Live uptown in the Bronx. Live in Canarsie, Brooklyn, or East New York, Harlem, East Side of Harlem, the Heights, Lower East Side, South Side, Jamaica, Queens. You tell me abolishing the police will be the answer if you live in those neighborhoods. Tell me. Even living in places like Chicago, Baltimore, Philly, Boston, Atlanta, LA. You tell me if defund the police, well, besides defund the police and abolish the police is okay. But those other neighborhoods I name in New York, you tell me if you want to defund the police or not. Because honestly, to tell you the truth, abolishing, getting rid of police is. They're giving the Republicans every right to go on Fox News and, and say all kinds of shit. And you know how them Karens are, the ones that voted for him, uh, for Donald Trump. They're going to give every reason to put Republicans right back in that bitch. We don't need that. We're about to get another stimulus real soon because there is another talk of another stimulus, which I'm not surprised that shit's going to happen. Because why? Because... Um, we're still in the midst of the pandemic. We're not going to get out of it no time soon. You know, we all trapped in our motherfucking house. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just reality. But Jason Johnson, he blocks anybody. Dr. Johnson blocks anybody. I don't understand. I, I don't understand him. He's been pissing me off lately. And, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Done. Done, done, done. done. Yep, and then, of course, I love dragging the shit out of this man because he's a bitch, too. <sighs> Proud socialist. You know I'm going to drag that ass for filth because I think it's time for his ass to get dragged repeatedly because I'm so sick of his shit. I am sick of his fucking shit. I'm trying to see where it is because I tweet a lot. I've been tweeting a lot because I've been mad and frustrated. Oh, you know what? Let me just search for it.
Here we go. Because it's the tweet here that will still piss me off. Because I hate... It's one thing you, you know... You are in tune with black issues, but there's another thing when you try to pander. And I feel like this tweet is pandering. So here it is. If, I'm going to read it the way he wrote it. If black people are the backbone of the Democratic Party, because he had those in quotes, then why are at Joe Biden and at the Democrats not fighting for reparations and to defund the police and ship resources into black communities? Black people in this country need justice, not empty platitudes, optics, and lip service. As I said before, Mr. Knight, you are the motherfucking lip service. You are the guy that spread platitudes because all you do is trying to grift and pander like a motherfucker. The last time I checked, you voted for um, establishment Democrats. President Obama, Hillary Clinton, you supported Elizabeth Warren, and then when you find no use for her, then you supported Bernie Sanders, and then all of a sudden you a motherfucking socialist. Bitch, please. I don't motherfucking understand your tweet. And then you criticize black people that voted for Joe Biden. But then you consider us the black the backbone of your party of excuse me of the democratic party bitch please as i said and if you got a problem with referring you as bitch please then you have problems with your own masculinity so girl bye i don't know i i try not i i haven't paid attention i don't follow mina like that so I don't know what's going on, but what I do know is um she is the vice president's niece, so she needs to chill. So yeah. But Ryan Knight's tweet rubbed me the wrong way. Ryan Knight's tweet is an example of pandering, white men pandering to black women. And black women see right through bullshit. They see right through Mr. Proud Socialist. They see through his grifting and his lying and his constant disrespect to black people. Him and David Serrata disrespected older black people who voted for Joe Biden. So when you disrespect the elders in the black community, black people have a problem with you. Unless you're Breonna Gray or Jamal Green then you have, they have no problem. But I have a problem with that bullshit. So, like I said to Ryan Knight, bitch, please. Nobody got time for that pandering bullshit. Really don't. And then, it's another thing with this, um... Bernie Sanders is now the guy who is the the revolutionary dude for health care. It's problematic for me too. But I just need to address this shit because it's about time. So here it is. So one guy who quoted my tweet, because I'm going to read the tweet that I, that I put a video. For those praising Bernie Sanders on proposing to lower the age eligibility for Medicare, it was actually then First Lady Hillary Clinton who came before the Senate back in 1993. And then, here goes this guy. And 93, House, Senate, and the White House, all Democratic controlled, yet a vote wasn't enough brought to the floor. Says a lot about our corporate-owned government, doesn't it? Red or blue, it doesn't matter. Both are paid off. So 
So I said this. Bernie Sanders was one of the politicians that voted no against it. And here goes proof. The Clinton administration backed bill, the Health Security Act, was introduced in the House on November 20th, 1993, with 103 co sponsors. Sanders was not among them. The Clinton campaign told us the Dartmouth video supports Clinton's comment. The video shows that while Hillary was not out front leading the fight for universal health care and taking the slings and arrows from the health care industry, Bernie was standing quietly in the back. But Bernie Sanders voted against that. His record on guns is shitty. He voted against the Brady Bill five fucking times like Joe Biden said. And Joe Biden ain't lying. Bernie Sanders' legislative record is more conservative than both Hillary Clinton's and Joseph Robinette Biden's. I mean, it's the truth. For 30 years in Congress and only seven of your 422 bills have been passed. And like two is renaming post office. Some others with John McCain, who was a staunch conservative, says a lot about you as a legislator. Bernie is not for the cause because if he was for the cause, more of his legislation would have became law. He would have actually came across the aisle and work with fellow Democrats, but he chose not to. He worked with more Republicans, conservative Republicans, than actual Democrats. And for the last fucking time, the Medicare for All bill was the late Rep. John Conyers of Detroit, Michigan. It wasn't Bernie Sanders' bill, even though he was a sponsor. But it was more so John Kine's bill back in 2003. Bernie Sanders just took credit for the bill in 2016. While John Conyers was still in Congress. Says a lot about Christopher Columbus things, things right? Yeah. Yeah. Bernie Sanders doesn't have original plans. And I have no beef against Bernie Sanders. But I'm calling facts the way it is. It's the truth. Hillary Clinton was right. And Bernie Sanders is not an easy person to work with in Congress. And both chambers of the legislative branch. So, it's the truth. And whoever's mad... I can give two fucks because he is the embodiment of the establishment. He is an establishment figure. He's more establishment figure than Joe Biden is almost damn near. They talk about Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, and Kamala Harris being establishment. Bernie Sanders has been in Congress for 30 years. He's almost, he what, he's six years under Joe Biden in his legislative branch. It is what it is. So, to all of you abolitionists and bro socialists out there, your golden guy is the establishment. He Christopher Columbus's plans and make it his own, and it'd be shitty. And you wonder why. Black people voted for the quote-unquote establishment candidate because of their legislative record actually matches of what they believe in. Bernie Sanders' legislative record is more conservative. All the facts is on congress.gov. But you abolitionists, let me tell y'all something. Y'all really pressing my motherfucking nerves with this whole abolish the police shit. Abolishing the police will create white militias. Just plain and simple. And if you think 
the police goes at the black people, you won't see nothing yet out of these white militias because they don't give a fuck about black people. And you white bro socialists, you're not our fucking allies. Because if you were, you would have voted for the Democratic platform back in 2016. And you would have voted in overwhelming numbers in 2020. And you didn't. Black people saved this country once again from evil. So if you got a problem with the fuck I said, you can unfollow me if you follow me. Or pass the fuck on through all my videos because... I said what the fuck I said all day, every day, and I keep it a buck. I keep it a G. So fuck off. As I said. So that was just me addressing the abolitionists. Now I need to say this about the New York City mural thing, and I'm not going to be on here because it's almost an hour since I've been on here. I am supporting two candidates. Yes, I am. Everybody was like, why are you just not just supporting Maya? And I said, I, I, I like Maya. I donated to Maya. And I'm going to donate to Adams. Why can't I support two people? This is my city. I was born, raised, still live here. Some people that was born and raised here, they had to move because they couldn't afford to live here. But I, I am grateful that I still live here to this day by myself. Paying my motherfucking rent. So I can support whoever the fuck... I want to support. So I support Maya and I support Adams. But I would like for Maya to not run on the same platform that Elizabeth Warren is running on. Because that will not get you to the golden ticket. She has to do really well in the debates. Like, she has to do extremely well in the debates to pick up her poll numbers. But some of those people that's working for her in the Warren camp, that were in the Warren camp... Do not do that to her. Make her talk to also older black folks too. Because I hope they're calling older black folks. I hope they, they honestly, I really, 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 really hope that they do call older black folks. Because those are the ones that show up to the primaries. More than the younger black folks that are around my age. They show up to primaries because... Older folks believe in voting in every motherfucking election. And those older folks includes my mother. So I hope the Wiley campaign does that. I can't vote, but my son and my cousins can't. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. I hope everything I hope everything works out. Give me an update on, on a thing to let me know. But, yeah. And Adams, Adams is reaching out to older folks, but he needs to be more, a little bit more active on social media because he needs to, but, um, yeah. See, Adams, oh, Adams is on it. Adams be talking to people like black, black and Hispanic people. They, they like really like in his circle. So, um, like I said, the Wiley campaign, they got to talk to outreach to all the black folks in the Democratic Party. That, that's my best bet. Harlem is, she started, started out going around in Harlem, but she got to go uptown in the Bronx, she, Brooklyn, Queens, like Staten Island. There's some older black folks in Staten Island, so she has to, like, reach out to all the black folks. Oh, okay. You live on, out on Long Island. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. But I live in the city still, so, you know. And then I think there's a lot of local elections. There's Ball President, because I live in Manhattan. Then there's um, City Council. So there's a lot of local elections this year. And Controller. You are so right. If I need to know anything about local candidate, my grandmother is the one to ask. She has the tabs on everything. Yeah, my mother is 67, 68. So she has optimum and she lives in the Bronx. So therefore she knows what's going on, even though I know what's going on. Yeah, the Bronx, yeah, and those are the, those people out there, they do go vote in primaries too. Heavenly. Heavenly. So 
like I said, the Wiley campaign, they got to reach out to those older black folks and them older Hispanic folks too, because those are the people that will get you to the finish line. And Yang is a Yang is not a New Yorker. He's from upstate, but he's not a New Yorker. He doesn't know how the city is run. The city got so many agencies. The city has a big budget. So they're very um he's not gonna it's it's a wild species here. New York is such a wild beast, and then most of the city workers are people of color. So and plus Yang is dumb. He will get crushed in those debates by both Wiley and Adams. They will clean his ass the fuck up. And that's something that I know. And besides them two, Garcia may clean him the fuck up. Donovan may clean him the fuck up. So there's actually competent people. Scott Stringer looked like he's not a great debater. But, um... Adams look like he don't fuck around. Him and, 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 of course, Wiley. But Adams is old New York. Old New York. Like, my dad's era, old New York. Like, they just raised in different boroughs. But he will clean Yang up for lunch. And plus, Yang's supporters said some racist shit about Adams, too. So, that's going to be some shit. They already putting out, they already colonizing um, Adams, the Yang Gang. And it's fucking racist as fuck. The governor's race in Texas, I'm not a Texan, I'm a New Yorker, because our, our election is next year too. And most likely, I don't think my governor's running for re-election. And honestly, I'm kind of happy about that because he's almost 65 and he just needs to go somewhere and relax. Husband told me that their Adams meeting, no white and no Asian officers came. Oh, wow. But um, I said no celebrities. Should not run for any elected office. No. Leave it to the experienced politicians. Or people who used to work with politicians. Make sense? Because you need experienced people to run this country. Look, we had an, ex an inexperienced president. And you see how that shit went. And unfortunately, he's from my city. Sad to say, they have to claim that piece of shit. But yeah, I'm I am a Texas, and I cannot. I can tell you, we just want anyone but Abbott, but no, not a celebrity. Yep, Beto, I think is will be a good choice for you guys. Beto looked like he know his shit. He was a congressman for for quite a while, so and he almost kicked Ted Cruz's ass. So I'm I'm pretty sure he might kick Greg Abbott's ass. Because he knows the people in Texas and he knows how to speak Spanish. And he knows Texas politics and he's well connected. And I can also see Julian running because Julian is a Texan too. So they will both be good. Either one. One can run for lieutenant governor. They could both run on a ticket together. Either one. They could swap. Either governor, lieutenant governor. They could swap. It doesn't matter. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. But they don't know that in this city, like when it comes to voting Democratic, a lot of black people in the city voted Democrat and Hispanics. And even some Indians. So, I mean, Southeast Asian Indians. So, I mean, tough on Yang. And Yang fuck himself up. Yang is digging his own self for a grave. Yeah, our, our next year um, in New York is governor and senator. Chuck Schumer is running for re-election. And I think um, AOC is trying to run against him. Good luck with that because Chuck Schumer is well-respected in the downstate and even upstate. She's not really respected in either both the upstate and the downstate. So good luck with that. Yeah, I agree. And um, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not even too much thinking about midterms right now. But listen, I don't know. I'm not really thinking about midterms right now because I'm still trying to get used to this new administration. Try to call Joe Biden vice. No, excuse me. See, I almost messed myself. President Biden and not Vice President Biden because I've been saying Vice President Biden forever. For like the last 12 years of my life. And I got it. And I'm getting used to saying Vice President Harrison. And now I just got to say President Biden. So towards the end of the year after the mayor election, then I can think about the midterms. But until then, folks, I've been here almost an hour. You have a good night and have a great work week. Take care.